I'm still doing chores which aren't in my bed so that makes me not bed bound of course i'm not bed bound hi look at me i'm able to walk or oh look at me i'm eating an apple screw in your brain hey guys so welcome to the video I wanted to film this video so there's this channel that I have been watching for a long time now, almost when they first uploaded their first video. So I've been following this person. I was watching them for, you know, weight loss reasons and this and that. And then they started making videos about me. It was very, it was honestly sad, I'll be honest, because I looked up to this person, I liked them as a YouTuber and stuff like that, and then I was like, oh no, another person wants to make YouTube videos about me, and it's like, a part of me wanted to stop watching this person completely, but then I was like, but I've, I've grown to like them, and it was like this weird conflicting thing in my brain, and I just, I continued watching them, and I try my hardest not to watch the videos that they make about me, but it's like I kind of can't stop myself from watching them. Um, I love to hear their opinion or whatever. So the video they uploaded today, I, I'm hurt by. So there are some things regarding the video that I want to answer, talk about, maybe make people understand because I feel like if this one person feels this way then I'm sure a lot of people feel this way or have these questions and I don't want it like that because this person called me a liar. They said that I've been lying about being bed bound and not being bed bound and like all this stuff and it was just really weird and it really hurt because I really opened up in my last video and I know a lot of people appreciated it and I know a lot of people didn't give a care, which is totally fine, everyone's different. The first and foremost thing that I wanna say is being in denial and lying are two completely different things. I am slash was in denial. I was in denial that I was bed bound. There are reasons why I didn't think I was at the time, and there are reasons why I understand that I actually was. A big, big thing though, was I was in denial. The best part about losing weight and really focusing in on what matters to you and learning about your body and changing your food intake and being more mobile, and you have to work on your mental state a lot, and I've noticed that being delusional has been my forte, that has been my jam. Um, I have been completely just like delusioned by all this stuff that I feed myself instead of really opening my eyes to reality and the reason why I said that I'm probably still in denial on some things is because I probably am. Something I've noticed by watching a lot of weight loss channels and also by diving into my own is that a lot of us are kind of delusional like when you gain a pound one week you come up with all these excuses or if you only lose a pound you come up with all these excuses when honestly i don't think people are flat out lying i i would like to hope not but it's like we are in denial to ourselves i recently watched a what i ate today video by someone i've been following for so long and everything in their video was super healthy and i was like okay then wouldn't they be smaller so i started to be a viewer that i the viewers that i have because you guys see me film what i ate today videos like recently i did a what i ate today on instagram and all my food was really well portioned and that's what i ate that day but there's a question of when some of us are filming what i ate today videos are we in denial of what we truly eat and are we subconsciously trying to show a healthier more oh small portioned type of meals because subconsciously we are in denial of how much we eat in a day and the reason why i brought that up is because the person later took to instagram and admitted you know i think i am in denial because normally i wouldn't eat that healthy and this person subconsciously ate healthier so i feel like being in denial can go so many different sort of ways 
but I just want to let everyone know that I did not lie hundred thousand million percent it's just I had my own delusion my own thing going on in my brain during the time where I was not that mobile I did not make that unknown you guys saw the mattress in the living room where I then told you guys it's because my leg is constantly hurting and it's easier for me to sit on a mattress and when I want to hang out with my friends that's also something else I would go in the living room but Becky would bring out a mattress for me and I would sit on it that was not something I was hiding it was shown in several vlogs I explained it in a couple I, I wasn't hiding that so another thing is I couldn't breathe I also was not hiding that that's why I documented some of my exercising and how I could only walk for a minute and 16 seconds and then it slowly went up to three minutes and I would even feel myself walking in place and you guys could hear my breathing I was also not hiding that I wasn't hiding the fact that I couldn't fit in a car pro properly and sometimes I honestly couldn't even get the door to shut comfortably because I would be really swollen from my lymphedema because I was eating too much sodium, wasn't drinking enough water, just retaining a ton of fluid. I wasn't hiding that either. I talked a lot about how I was so immobile that I feel like if I was more mobile then my videos would be better, my vlogs would be better because there wouldn't be so many sit down videos. I said that a lot actually and I said that a lot in Instagram Q and A's because you guys saw a lot of sit down videos from me. You still will continue to see those but you guys didn't see any videos of me standing or anything and those are things that I also was not hiding. So it's not like I was hiding this completely different life at all because I was still very open with the struggles that I was having. So when it comes to the word bed bound, I feel like 600 pound life has tainted that word for me. It made me think of bed bound in a certain way that I didn't know. Again, when I say these things, I was probably just in denial. But at the time, 600 pound life, portrayed for me probably because I didn't want to admit it myself at the time that I was pretty much bed bound um, how it portrayed being bed bound to me was you had to have your significant other or pay a friend to come bathe you and literally physically you had to be helped to walk around and you just literally could not get up like at all like you spent 24 hours a day in your bed, that was it, point blank period, couldn't move. So I kinda wanna explain the reasons why for you know over a year I consistently said I don't think I'm bed bound. Again, delusion was in the mix of this, but these are the reasons why I was like, no, I'm not bed bound. And I kept telling myself I wasn't over and over and over. So chores were really hard for me but it didn't stop me from doing them completely. If I was sweeping, you guys, it was almost pathetic. I would probably sweep for utmost 20 seconds, sit down. Sweep for 20 seconds, sit down. 20 seconds, sit down. If I was doing the dishes, I was sitting down. If I was cooking, I was sitting down. If I was wiping down the counters, I was sitting down. If I was doing anything, I was sitting down. It doesn't matter what it was. I was always sitting down when doing any sort of chore. But in my head I was like, I'm still doing chores which aren't in my bed, so that makes me not bed bound. When I imagine, or when I imagined someone as being bed bound, I imagine them not being able to shower. And this is like a constant topic on my channel, is like, can she shower? Can she wipe herself? Does Becky help her with these things? Point blank period, no, no, and she never has. I think it's more so like a pride thing within myself. It's almost like no matter how hard it got, I did not want help because it made me feel like less than a person. Like I didn't even feel, I, would, I just wouldn't feel human at that point if I was having my own girlfriend wipe my butt for me. So yes. I still showered, but the thing is, I could not wash my hair and my body on the same day. So I told myself, well, you're able to wash your body, even though it hurts and you have to take a million breaks. You're able to do it. You're able to wash your hair, even though it hurts and you have to take several breaks and you have to hurry up in the shower because you're literally dying in there. 
you're still doing it like a normal person. You're literally in the shower. So that's another reason why I was like, no, of course I'm not bed bound. There were times that I left the house and it wasn't a lot, obviously not. I mean, I still don't leave the house a lot now. Like I do, it's grocery shopping, dates here and there, see friends. I don't have this big glorious life, but back then, I, I wouldn't leave the house that much. Maybe once a month, twice a month. And, you know, I would go to holidays with Becky's family and we would go on dates, but I would say probably like a date would probably be once every two months. So I also convinced myself, well, I do leave the house sometimes and people who are bed bound literally can't even fit in a car even if it does hurt. Like I said, 600 pound life like warped my brain and I'm not saying it's their fault. It's my fault because I was in denial and I would compare myself to these people all the time and it's like I would see these people who were bed bound like they had to put mattresses in the back of a car and they had to lay on them and they couldn't fit in the seats of the car and it's like I kept telling myself, well, I can fit in the seat. I can fit in the passenger seat. Yeah, it hurts to close the door, but that doesn't mean I'm bed bound. I even went to Lexington and vlogged it. Um, that was during the time where I was working as hard as I could on becoming more mobile. So I thought by staying in a hotel, okay, I kind of sort of have to walk down the long hallways and I have to stand in the elevator and I have to walk through the big lobby and I have to wait for the valet to give us our car and all this stuff. So I thought it was a good way for me to be mobile while also being lazy and eating whatever food I wanted because when I went to Lexington, I was a glutton. It was really bad. You guys saw that video because I did a what I ate on vacation video. But that was when I was trying my hardest to also work on my mobility. So I think I used the hotel of like, oh, I'm going to like walk in the hotel as an excuse just to eat. But again, denial, denial, denial. It's just part of... I feel like it's a big part of why people get the weight that I am or was. But since I, I went to Lexington and I was able to sit in the car for two hours and this and that, I was like, people who are bed bound can't do that. I would do my makeup. I would do my hair. I would put on cute outfits. I would do on try on hauls. I would do all these things and I convinced myself bed bound people cannot do that. So you guys, these are the reasons where I was like, of course I'm not bed bound, hi. You know, it was not me lying and I don't want people to think that at all. I was delusional, I was in denial. Like those are like the, the pivotal words of this video. So again, being a liar and being in denial are two completely different things. And I guess I should have like explained myself better, but you know, I was like cooking my food and I was just like super happy that I was able to, you know, do it without keeling over. So there are some questions I wanna answer that the person kind of mentioned in the video. I have them written down before me. So why now say you're a bed bound and can you explain more of the timelines? Because I noticed when they were talking, the timelines were getting kind of messed up, which I'm, really bad at timelines too so i'm not afraid to admit that so my biggest time of being bed bound you know what i also want to explain the reason why i'm calling it bed bound now is because in actuality probably down to the definition i i was bed bound at the time i didn't think i was because the delusion whatever 2018 is when it was at its peak when I stayed in the bed most of the time, my leg was hurting really bad, like had no idea what was causing it. And that is when it was literally at its peak. 2019 is when it slowly stopped because my leg wasn't hurting as bad. And I was, during that time when my leg stopped hurting, that is when my lymphedema got really bad and it just started growing more and more which made me not want to leave the house. I didn't want to do anything because I was so embarrassed. And it's like, I'm just to the point where I'm, I have to accept it because lymphedema is not something that is, it can go away. 
Um, it can get smaller with weight loss and that's a big pivotal moment where I'm really focusing on that. So once my legs started feeling better, my lymphedema was growing, I still like did not have any stamina. You guys saw that for yourself because I documented a lot of walking in 2019. You guys saw that. So that is when I was trying to work on my mobility, which I'm sure you guys noticed. And it was towards two, it was towards the end of 2019 obviously where it started to get better because i started to work harder at it look at me i'm able to walk or oh look at me i'm eating an apple <laughs> like it's stupid like i want to be able to tell you guys like hey um i used to only be able to wash my body and my hair like on separate days because i couldn't do it in the same day because i was too big and i like couldn't breathe and i was in too much pain <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i want to be able to talk about those things with you guys so another question is why lose weight now what made you want to lose weight now and i feel like it's kind of a silly question mainly because it's like i've always wanted to lose weight for the same reason enough is enough i don't want to die point blank period those, those things have always been my reason and i feel like they should be everyone's reason like you want to live a long healthy happy life but wanting and doing are two separate things obviously just because I wanted to lose weight so bad for these reasons something just has to click I how I always imagined it is like there's a little like little screw in your brain and it's just chilling in there it's trying to find you know the spot where it's supposed to belong and you try all these little diets and this and that and like nothing ever clicks and then all of a sudden the screw goes right where it belongs and it just clicks right right in its place and somehow you're just like this is it this is the time you guys i'm gonna be 30 this year in december i'm gonna be 30 i 30 to me used to be so old like i used to think about 30 is so old and now that's gonna be me and it's like the only way i will see my 40s is if i do it now i completely wasted my 20s but do i also want to waste my 30s because i only see myself getting worse if i don't do it now so that's why it's like finally. Another thing that they mentioned is that when I talk about my lymphedema or when I talk about being bed bound, I seem to laugh while I do it. I take it lighthearted supposedly and stuff like that, which I actually understand because I don't notice that I do those things. Like I do the, like a little chuckle or like a little giggle after certain things that I say that are serious topics. And I don't even notice it until I'm either A, editing my video, or B, people are pointing it out to me. So that just indicates I really honestly think that it's like a habit, a nervous habit, because that's thoroughly the only thing I can think of. Because while I'm talking about these things, I don't think it's funny. Obviously, I do not find humor in me being bedbound, immobile, lymphedema, my health in general. So I really honestly think it's just a nervous habit. So if I offend anyone while I'm doing that, please just don't take it to heart. Like I, I don't even notice I'm doing it. See, the thing is you guys didn't see the tears, the anxiety attacks, me feeling just completely trapped and miserable. And you guys didn't see that part. I didn't show that part because several different reasons. A, I didn't want to be that vulnerable. B, it's like I get told I do crocodile tears a lot, which I've never faked cried on camera. I've never faked cried in person. I don't know how. I don't know how people do it. Like, good job actors and actresses because I'm definitely not stealing your paycheck because I can't do it. So sometimes it's easier to not be super vulnerable on camera when it comes to things that are like really deep because people call you liars and you're doing it for views, this and that. So you guys didn't see all of the craziness regarding that. So I feel like maybe also when I talk about these things, I'm a little numb. Like I'm proud that I'm no longer, you know, super immobile. I'm not out here, you know, running five miles, but I'm also able to do things I wasn't able to do before, so it shows growth. And I just think that I spent so much time crying and just everything just like flooded in at once that I just feel like I, I don't feel the way I used to about it because I've worked on it off of camera. So if you guys don't see me being emotional about it or you guys see me just being nonchalant, it's not because I'm nonchalant or don't care or whatever it may have you, it's because I've already worked on this and I did it off the camera. So this person also was questioning if I ever was truly higher than 572.4, which is my highest weight, because they were saying, well, since she was bed bound, she should have gained more weight. How did she only stay at that weight? That doesn't make any sense. There is a certain point 
um, of calories that your body needs to maintain a weight. Clearly, I was staying around those calories because I honestly, I wouldn't weigh myself for, I feel like weeks. I didn't go any further than that usually because I was really worried that I was gonna reach 600 pounds. And every time I weighed myself, it was never higher than 572.4. So I think when it comes to my binging and my calorie consumption, I never went past that limit of gaining weight, if that makes sense. So I'm just throwing numbers out of my head because I truly don't know. Let's say 6,000 calories a day is what keeps you at 570 pounds. So obviously I wasn't going over that. And if I was, the next day I probably was only eating 4,000. So it made me balance on the 570s. And every time I stepped on the scale, no matter when it was, 572.4 was never bypassed. And I get questions so much about that. And it's like- you Guys, I've lost weight now. Don't you think that I would love more than anything to be like, I am down way more weight actually because i was higher than 572.4 like i'd love to throw that in people's faces and just be like i've lost more weight than only so and so pounds like i would love to do that so another question they asked is did i ever have sores on my legs no that is something that when i watch 600 pound life i question like why didn't I ever get those things? Like, I don't ever get random sores in my body just randomly or anywhere, leg, stomach, like, it doesn't even matter. If I have a sore, there's a reason. Um, I'm sure if you guys have been around long enough, you guys know that I have an issue. Like, if I get a cat scratch, I cannot stop picking it. Or if I get a mosquito bite, I'll itch it so much that it turns into a scab and then I can't stop picking it and it gets bigger and bigger. I'm sure you guys have been around for all that, but I've never had a random sore just pop up on my body ever. I mean, I'm telling you, if that was to ever happen, I would probably get freaked out. So it's weird to see so, so many people on Sister Life get that. I don't know what that is. Like, drop dead serious. So they also asked, how much time do you spend in your bed now? Before I go to sleep, I would say, I wanna say about five to four, four to five hours, I'm in my bed and it's before I go to sleep. And during that time, I'm editing, I'm talking with Becky, and that's like our time to like, talk together and hang out, sometimes we'll play games, or just like talk about our day or talk about life or talk about the freaking Pluto and Saturn. Um, but yeah, let's catch up on YouTube videos, catch up on um, shows or read or write. I've been doing a lot of writing lately. Like a lot of people throughout their day probably do these things. Like someone might watch two YouTube videos then, but then they do all this stuff and then they sit down and watch a movie and like all this stuff. I just do all mine in like a collective time and it's always right before I go to bed. That could be a big reason why I have trouble sleeping, so it's something I do need to work on. But yeah, being in my bed for only four hours out of a full day, sometimes even less than four hours to be honest is marvelous literally compared to how i used to be i would be in bed sleeping eating doing anything i just I, that's all it was was me being in bed and now when i wake up i purposely the first thing i do is i do some chores that's just what i prefer doing um, clean the kitchen, whatever it may be, and then I'll have breakfast. Sometimes I'll get ready first or sometimes I'll have breakfast first. And honestly, just depends. I am trying to create a schedule for myself instead of just like going off on the willy nilly. And I will not sit in my bed during the day because it just, it makes me go back to those times and I don't like it. But when I sit in there at night, I feel a little bit more like, okay, this makes more sense because Eric and Ricky does the same thing. We almost split off and go into our rooms at the same time. That's just what feels better to me. And I don't want to sit in there during the day because I don't want to go back to those bad habits and whatever it may be. So that is pretty much everything that I wanted to like clarify because I truly feel like a lot of people were probably thinking and wondering these things. So hopefully this video made you guys understand a little bit more that I am was just very much in denial and I was in delusional land and I'm really trying to work on that part of myself even more. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.